Welcome to a new SVJator tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this friendly cat animation. I'll use some basic animators, a little more for the tail, and easing settings to keep everything nice and smooth. You can download the provided cat SVG to follow along. First, let's look at the elements list. Here we have the body group. Inside, there's the head group, with the elements of the face grouped together and the ears. The tail is also in the body group. We will animate the legs separate from the body. This way they will be easier to control when it should touch the ground. Let's start with adding a bounce to the whole body. Select the body, click on animate and choose position to create our first keyframe. I actually want to start my animation with the cat leaping forward so I'll just drag the keyframe a little to the right and then move the cat's body up. I'm targeting the bounding box to make sure I move the whole group, then I'll drag the playhead ahead, right click the first keyframe, and choose duplicate to complete the bounce. To make the movement look more natural, I'll set the easing of the first part to ease in sign and the second to ease out sign. Select and duplicate the keyframes. You can also use command of control D on your keyboard. Let's play it back. Looks good. I need to readjust the duration of the timeline though. I can do that by dragging this line at the end of the timeline to where I want it to be, right here to my last keyframe. To see a preview on loop, I'll press export on the top right. Set infinite iterations and press refresh preview. <laughs> the cat is bouncing all right. Let's animate the legs next. Close this. Let's select the legs and adjust the origin points for this part. Also, for the legs individually, if the origin doesn't show up, make sure the transform tool is active. Click on the origin and drag it to the end of the line on both legs. We need them to rotate around that point instead of the center. Then select both legs, place the playhead to the start, click on animate and choose rotate. I can animate them together by dragging a corner or by using the transform panel on the right. I'll move the playhead here and change the rotation to negative minus 20. I'll move the playhead and duplicate the first keyframes. This works because the rotation is the same for both elements. Press space for a quick preview. I want it to be smoother, so I'll set the easing to ease in out sign for all of these keyframes. Good. I'll duplicate it one more time. Let's see. Not bad, but something's wrong. The legs should only touch the ground when the cat steps forward. Here, they should stay in the air. The next part is good. Then they should stay in the air again. Let's just fix this with a position animator. With the front legs group selected, click on Animate and choose Position. Move the playhead to the right spot, then move the legs away from the ground. That should be okay. I'll duplicate the first frame with Command or Control D and add easing again to keep everything smooth. Good. After the cat steps, I'll duplicate these again. For the back legs, I can duplicate the front legs group and change it a little. Selecting the front legs group, I'll press Command or Control D. I'll quickly check which keyframes belong to the elements in the back and select them all. Then drag them ahead to the correct position. I also want to change the color to a darker orange. I'll use the eyedropper for that next to the stroke color. There. Looks good. I just need to fix this part where my animation starts. I'll duplicate these keyframes that are missing and get rid of the extra ones from the end by pressing delete. Let's look at the preview. The walk cycle looks really good. I'm happy with this. Let's close this. These ended up being the back legs, so I'll double click the groups to rename them. These are the back and these are the front now. OK, now let's continue with the tail. I'll need to see the nodes of the tail to be able to morph it, so I'll select the node tool. You can also switch to the node tool by pressing A on your keyboard. Now let's click on animate and choose morph. I know that the animation will repeat twice at 0.8 seconds, so I'll place the playhead there and duplicate the first keyframe. 
It would be easier if the cat didn't move while I animate the tail. So I'll just hide the legs for now and also disable the bounce animation by selecting the body and clicking the light bulb icon in front of the position animator. Now I'll place the playhead right in between my start and end frames on the tail element. The cat doesn't move anymore. With the middle node selected, I click on the smooth asymmetric node type in the right panel to make sure it stays smooth. What I want to do is create a kind of opposite wave shape for the tail, so I'm adjusting the node handles accordingly. There, I think this'll do. Let's see. Hmm. Looks kind of strange, but the animation is smooth. Let's add a rotation animator to it as well for some extra movement. I'll switch to the transform tool by pressing V and move the origin point to the base of the tail. Move the playhead to the middle, rotate the tail down a little, duplicate the first frame to the end, select the frames and set the easing to ease in out sign. It looks a lot better now, but it's still not quite right. Let's add two more more frames in between the existing ones. The tail looks too straight in these spots. When the tail moves down, I want it to curve more downward. I'll turn off snapping real quick. I can adjust the nodes better now. That looks good, okay. Then where the tail moves up, I want it to curve the other way. I need to smooth the node again. There. Let's see. Wow, that made a huge difference. I'll duplicate these with Command or Control D and see how it looks in preview mode. I think I'm happy with that. Let's see it with the walk cycle. I'll select the body and re-enable the position animator with the light bulb icon and click on the eye icons to show the leg groups. Let's preview again. Yeah, I'm definitely happy with that tail. Now that the walk cycle is finished, I'll create the head turn. The red outline in the stage indicates the next element within the group. I can select the head group within the body, then the face group within the head group. I want to move it to the center of the head. If I select the head shape, I can see its center and drag a guide right there from the ruler. There. I'll select the face group, maybe the ID tag as well. Set the playhead back to the start. Click on Animate, then Position. Place the playhead to around half a second and drag the face to the center of the head. I like how that looks. I'll deselect the head holding down Shift so I can adjust the ID tag. I'll just nudge it with the arrow keys to place it under the collar. Good. Let's not forget about the easing settings. I'll set Ease in Sign here. I'll keep the face here, add new keyframes at second 1. Then turn the face back by duplicating the first frames to the end. Set Ease Out Sign to this last part. Let's preview. I think the head could turn a bit faster. I'll just adjust the keyframes here. This will also create a bit of a pause. <laughs> Let's check it out. Great! The animation looks pretty much finished already. I want to take some extra steps to give it more life and animate the ears, the eyes blinking, and the whiskers. I'll drag the guide away. I don't need it anymore. And I'll select the ears group. I want to move them a little bit down as the cat looks up. I'll move the origin. Click on Animate, choose Position. Adjust the playhead and move the ears down as the cat looks up. Add a new keyframe where it should start moving back. And duplicate the first keyframe where the head turn ends. Before I rotate the ears, I'll select them and move their origin points to the inner corners. I'll add the rotate animator to both and rotate the ears by dragging one of the corners. The right ear should rotate in the opposite direction. So with only that selected, I can easily change the value in transform panel. I just need to set a positive value instead of the negative one. Oops, <laughs> I forgot to move the playhead before animating. No problem, I'll just drag the keyframes to their correct place on the timeline and set the rotation back to zero in the transform panel. Now it's good. I can animate the ears rotating back with new keyframes here and duplicating the first frames at the end. Let's see the preview. Looks pretty good. It's a little bit out of sync because I haven't set the easing options yet, so let's just do that for all three animations. Set Ease In Sign for the first part and Ease Out Sign for the second to match the head turn. Let's see again. Now it looks perfect. <laughs> Let's close this. This line at the bottom looks too static now and a bit out of place with all the other elements moving. 
I'll add a scale animator and make the line shorter where the cat is stepping forward. I'll just drag one of the ends. Then duplicate the frames to match the walk cycle. I'll press space for a quick preview. Something seems off. I need to set the easing options to match the walk cycle as well. That's ease in sign and ease out sign alternating. Much better. Now for the final part, I'll animate the eyes blinking. Let's zoom in by scrolling in the viewport. I already prepared two rectangles above and below the eyes that I will use as eyelids. They're the same color as the cat's head. I'll open the left eye group as well. There are rectangles inside this group too. I want the cat to blink when it's looking this way here. Let's select the top eyelids. Click Animate, Position, move the playhead, drag the eyelids down to around the middle, like that. And for both elements, I'll duplicate the first keyframes to complete the animation. I'll do the same for the lower eyelids. Add a position animator, move them up, duplicate frames. That should do. I also want to rotate the lower whiskers with the blink. First, I need to place the origin point. I'll do that for both. I'll add the rotate animator. Adjust the playhead, then rotate counterclockwise. I can check that it's negative, minus 5.5 degrees in the transform panel on the right. I'll duplicate the first frame to rotate it back, then select the whisker on the other side and do the same. If I can't get the same rotation by dragging, I'll just write 5.5 in the transform panel. I'll duplicate the missing frame. And check how it looks. Let's see the preview. The whiskers look alright, but the blinking looks too slow. Let's adjust that. I'll just zoom in the timeline to see it better. OK. I need to select all four of the eyelids. There they are. I'll keep the first frames here and move the others closer. The last frames as well. This might work, however the frame where the cat's eyes are closed seems very brief, it's easy to miss. I want to make sure this frame gets noticed and we've got just the right tool for that. Let me just select the first keyframe, set the easing to step start and see what it does. The keyframe changed and if I move the playhead I can only see the middle frame, not a transition. If I choose step end, the first frame is visible up until the playhead is over the next frame. I'll just set this back to step start. I think the sudden blink works great with this flat style. Now if I look more closely at the whiskers, I don't really mind that it doesn't match the blinking. I think it's enough if I exaggerate the first part with easing. In the easing panel, let's scroll all the way down. There are quite a few easing presets. Let's choose ease out back. Yeah, seems okay. Let's look at the preview. Great! Animating the eyes and blinking is a great way to bring characters to life. I can export the finished animation for the web as well as for React Native or Flutter. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified about more videos like this. Thank you for watching.